going on youtubers this is buddy coming at you another quick video this is the what you're looking at right here is the 20 gallon long build this is the first video um i did i did a video where i did an unboxing of the live rock and and sprawled out the pieces and showed the pieces and stuff but uh be honest with you the video kind of sucked i'm just gonna be honest with you so i'm not gonna use it um, I already deleted it. It just kind of sucks. So I just went ahead and just figured, you know, I'll just aquascape it and do what I want. And then I will talk about why I did what I did and, and things like that. Show you the sand that I'm going to use. Show you the tank. And just have the first video be like that. Instead of just sprawling it out and then pausing it. I mean, you know, I don't know. I just, I didn't like the video. So whatever. All right. So this is the first piece. We'll talk about this piece here. This is the first piece I went with. Now, I, I chose this rock because uh, it's real porous. It stands up really nice on its own. And I wanted three islands in this tank, and I'll, and I'll explain each one as I go. But this one right here had a nice ledge all on its own, had another nice little ledge right there. And I really liked the, the dimensions of the rock. If you come over here, see the rock looks really sharp all the way around. It's got a real cool look on top. And I just, I love the way that rock looks. And there's tons of holes for me to stick frags and stuff in. And as the coralline algae grows out on that, that is just going to look absolutely sharp. And the, the contact with the glass is relatively small for as big as the rock is. And so that, that's going to give me less uh, area for detritus to build up at the base of the rocks because the rock at the base is relatively small. So that was another reason why I chose this rock here. Now we'll get we'll get on to let's go on to this section here because the center section is actually a couple pieces of rocks. <clears throat> so this rock here, I chose another another reason why I chose this rock is because it stands up all by itself, nice and uh nice and level all by itself without having to carve it, do anything special. It's got some holes underneath. You know, obviously, ain't no fish gonna uh, go under there besides like some sand shift and gobies and things like that. Maybe able to use that as a natural cave for them as I pour the sand around it and they dig looking for places to kind of make their homes. And I may go with some sand shift and gobies in here and maybe a peppermint shrimp or something, you know, pair them up or something. We'll see. Or not a pe peppermint shrimp, a pistol shrimp. Sorry. <clears throat> I'm battling a cold, guys, so you might hear it in my voice. <clears throat> oh. I work outside, so you know I get I get sick from now and, now and again. So and this rock was real porous. It's real light. It's a nice big rock, and I really love the shape of it. So that was another reason why I chose this rock. I'm gonna go around and show you another dimension from this side. You know, it looks it looks sharp all the way around. It's just a really nice looking rock. So any way I wanted to put that rock, it just looks amazing. So that was a reason. That was another reason why I chose this particular rock here. Now my center section here is actually four pieces of rocks. This one right here, there's a rock all by itself. This one on the bottom is a rock all by itself. This one here is a rock by itself. And this one in the back is a rock by itself. Now these are epoxy together right now, so they're not going anywhere. They're all they're all one rock now. See they're not they're not going anywhere. They're all one now. Which is fine. I still have to put a little bit right here, right there, just to hold these two together on the bottom. But for the most part, I don't need to. They're not going anywhere. But I will do it just for the heck of it. All right, I'll slide it over later. All right, so basically what I wanted here is this rock here has a natural cave to it. That's why I chose this one. I did not uh, punch that out in any kind of way or carve it. That had a natural cave to it. So you want to look for rocks like that that you can use that have natural caves where you don't have to do anything. I mean, carving the rock a little bit and, and, and making things out of it is great. It's all part of the aquascape. It's all part of the fun of it. I'm always, I normally do it myself. But with this particular tank, I didn't want to do anything like that. I wanted to just get rocks that I really love the shape of and just made my life a lot easier. Now this hole right here in the center actually looks small on camera, but it's actually a decent hole, big enough for the clownfish that I'm going to host in here to be able to swim in and out of it and go all the way around the back. Same thing with this hole right here. That's a really nice hole. Nice hole for the fish. See, it looks huge. Um, or I mean, it looks smaller on camera than it really is. Actually, a really nice size hole. Really big for the fish to swim in and out. They can go all the way around to the back of it. You know, they can all come all the way around to the back and come out the back, which is really sharp. Let me see if I can get you a shot on this side. See, right around the back. Real nice and open all the way around. So I chose these four rocks for that particular reason. Now what I actually do is I actually go in the fish store and I actually pull out the rocks. I lay them on the ground 
and I started aquascaping them right there on the floor. I was in there for probably 45 minutes aquascaping the rocks right there on the floor. And they look looking at me like I'm crazy, but I don't care. You know, I'm paying the money for it. I'm going to get what I want, and that's all there is to it, and you're going to deal with it. And ultimately, they, they dealt with it, and they just uh, walked around me and worked around me as I built what I want. And then when I decided, when I built what I wanted and decided, hey, I can use these, I work with these, I like them, I put them in a box and paid for them. So that's the way I went. And I, I recommend other people to do that too. I mean, I know if you're going there looking for rock for a 125-gallon aquarium or, or 65 or, or whatever, 225, it's tough for you to do that because we're talking a lot of rock. So ultimately, you're just going to get a bin and start picking rocks, looking at them. Yeah, that one looks really cool. Let's go with that one. You're not going to be able to aquascape it on the floor because you're just going to have so much. I didn't have that much. Ultimately, I had one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of rock. You know, it wasn't that serious. I found six pieces that I liked, came up with the aquascape that I wanted. I wanted three islands in this aquarium because of it's a 20-gallon long, so it had, it had some length to it. And I'm going with the Kessel A160 on this, so I wanted my center section to be um, kind of like my cave section and then two small islands off to the side where I'm going to have some chalices, my uh, um, zoophrags, you know, things like that. I'm not deciding which island I'm going to put what on yet. Um, and I'm definitely going to go with a lot of softies and LPS corals in this aquarium. I'm going to get a nice anemone in this aquarium. haven't decided whether I'm going to go to rose bubble tipped anemone or the sea band, uh, the sea band anemone, the, the white with the purple tips. haven't decided what I'm going to go with yet. Um, I've been talking to Vivid Aquariums, looking at their anemones, and I'm probably just going to order one from them. They have some really gorgeous ones. And the one that I want... Um, I'll, I'll wait for that. I'm not going to tell you. You'll see that in further videos, and we'll talk about that. I don't want to. I don't want to put that out there yet. All right. So I don't know if I told you, but this is the epoxy that I used. It's the Instant Ocean epoxy. It's not the best epoxy out there, but it does work. Um, and I paid $7.99 for it, so that's what I got. Some fish stores do charge a little bit more, but it does work good. Like I said, it's not the best, but it works pretty good. I'll show you where I epoxy it. It doesn't. It it does kind of turn more of a grayish color. Uh, but it does uh, it does the job, and as the algae grows, you don't out over it. You really don't notice that grayish look. Now I take a screwdriver and I puncture these little holes into it to give it more of a textured, more of a texture to it than that smooth look. And as the algae grows on it, blends in much better. I did it down there, 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 and let me see if I can show you over here, and right there. And, you know, it doesn't look too bad. And that's just a screwdriver. Now, you can play with it a little bit more. I would recommend maybe taking an, a little piece of rubble rock and, and pressing the imprints of the rubble rock into it. That'll give you even even better of a design or a, a pattern or however you want to say it. Um, or a better texture. texture. I just used uh, a screwdriver. I just poked little holes with a screwdriver. But, you know, play with it. Have fun with it, guys. Turn it into whatever you want. I'm going to put one more piece of epoxy right, right in here to hold that together just so they don't ever move. Uh, when the time comes, I will epoxy, put some epoxy and epoxy all these rocks. Not this because this is going to be, it's not going nowhere. But this one and this one, I will epoxy right to the glass on the tank, pour the sand around it, and that will be done. Now, I did not go at live sand. I just went with the, 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 the the Caribbean Sea Aragonite Dry Sand. I did not go with the live sand. Um, I just got a 15 pound bag of sand. That'll give me about one, one and a half inch across the bottom uh, of sand. I might experiment with a deep sand bed. I've never set up a tank with a deep sand bed before. Um, I'm not a big fan of them and I have my reasons why. They, they have their place though. They do have their place. They are great. I'm not knocking, saying anything bad about them. They do have their place and they can be very beneficial if properly seeded and properly uh, set up. But I might go with it in this one, and if I do, I'll, buy, I'll probably buy a bag of live sand and mix the dead sand with the live sand uh, just for the heck of it. Or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just buy another bag of this. It's a 15-pound bag for 20 bucks, so I figured, what the heck. Um, and I'll probably just take a, maybe a half a cup of live sand from my aquarium and seed this with it. Now, I already have a tank going, so I already have rocks in the sump in my aquarium. They've been in there for about three weeks, uh, building that beneficial bacteria and stuff that I'm going to use to cycle this aquarium. So that's one good thing if you have an aquarium set up already. If not, you can simply um, get 
bacterial products in a bottle to help to cycle the aquarium when you start with 100% dead rock. You can buy a couple small pieces of live rock. But ultimately, we're starting with dead rock for a couple reasons. One reason is you're buying all rock, no water weight. You're not paying for any water weight. We're getting 100% pest-free rock. You don't have to worry about any pest. So buying all the dead rock and then throwing a couple pieces of live rock in there, you're taking a risk. You end, might end up with some eptasia. You might end up with some fireworms. You don't know, okay? You know, you're taking a risk. So to start the aquarium with all dead rock and then buy a couple pieces of live rock to help to seed the aquarium with those beneficial critters may not be the way to go. There's starter packs online, guys, that you can buy with the spaghetti worms, the 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 uh, bristle bristle worms, you know, trigger pods, cocoa pods. It, you know, you can just buy that online. They're not very expensive. The starter packs to seed the tank with the with the critters, and they're going to populate real quick. And it's about the same amount of money you're going to spend on five, five or six pounds of live rock. So, you know, that's the way I would go. I don't, I don't buy live rock. But in my case, I have a tank going that's pest-free. I just take, I throw a couple pieces of dead rock in the sump, leave them in there for three, four weeks. They get all the critters and stuff I need, and I add them to this aquascape. I'll put them in here for, I don't know, maybe a month, and then I'll take them out and throw them in the sump, in this, in this sump that I'm building. I have a 10-gallon sump. So this is about... Uh, 0.5 on the grain size uh, It's not quite it might be a little bit thicker. It's not quite or a little bigger It's not quite sugar fine, but it's pretty fine um, It actually I couldn't find on the bag where it actually stated the exact Grain size um, I will find it, but I just looked at a bag and said yeah, that looks good enough for me I'm happy grabbed it. All right guys, so this is where I'm at right now tomorrow I'm gonna go get uh, the pieces I need for the sump we're going to start building the sump tomorrow, we're going to start building the stand, and we're going to get this tank up and going. I will show you that it's a 20 gallon long. Got it right from PetSmart <clears throat> for $27.99 with my pet, pex, pet, pet per, perks card, alright? My pet perks card, 20, $27.99, 20 gallon long. Alright guys, this is Buddy signing out. Oh, real quick, like I said, I was thinking about considering drilling this tank. Um, I'm really concerned doing a DIY overflow for one main reason. Most new hobbyists are not going to drill their tanks. There are a lot of new hobbyists that do, but most new hobbyists aren't going to drill their tank. So I'm really debating on whether I'm going to drill it or just do a DIY overflow because I am ultimately doing this for new hobbyists. Um, you know, leave your comments down below. What do you guys think? Should I go with the DIY overflow? Should I drill it? You know, really, it's ultimately up to you guys. If you want me to drill it, I'll drill it. If people want to see how to drill a tank... I'll do it. If you want to see how to build a DIY overflow and see how that works, I'll go that way. You guys tell me, I'll do it. If I don't, if I don't get any comments on that, I'll just end up ultimately deciding what I'm going to do on my own. All right, guys, this is Buddy signing out. Happy reefing.